just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak Jesus. Good morning. Yeah, let's put our hands together and sing out. We are the children of God and we are children of love, His love. 
nothing better than that. I was walking the wayside, lost on a lonely road. I was chasing the highlight. Left me crying like the rain Then I saw lightning from heaven And I've never been the same Yeah, sing it out I'm gonna climb a mountain I'm gonna shout about it I am a child of love I found a world of freedom I found a friend of Jesus
Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rock Church Online Worship. I'm Pastor Steve, and I'm so pleased that you could join us this morning as we have this time of worship together. We're going to begin in our scripture reading from Matthew chapter 21. So if you have a Bible handy or you want to pull it up on your phone, I invite you to join me in Matthew chapter 21. We'll be looking at verses 12 through 17. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? He asked them. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read? From the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth praise. And he left them and went out to the city of Bethany, where he spent the night. Did you know that God has chosen a name for his house? In Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7, the prophet declared, My house shall be called a house of prayer. So when the merchants had made the temple into a marketplace, what Jesus described as a den of thieves, Jesus reminded them of what God had said. You know, when we gather in our place of worship, a lot happens. There is fellowship and community There are songs of praise that are sung. God's word is read and expounded upon. There is spiritual teaching. Sometimes there are even the sacraments. We'll celebrate communion or from time to time celebrate baptism. And all of that is important. God intends for his church to be a place of loving community. But he never called the church a house of fellowship. And God certainly desires, I believe, to hear songs of praise sung. I think it brings joy to God's heart when we lift up his name in song and praise. But he doesn't call this house a house of praise and worship. Obviously, he wants us to hear the word of God and to grow deeper in understanding of his word. But he doesn't call this place a house of learning. And as powerful as the sacraments are, when we break bread together and share of the cup, when we see someone commit their lives to Christ and symbolize that in in baptism, as powerful those sacraments are, Jesus never called, Isaiah never called his house a house of communion, or a house of baptism. He calls it a house of prayer. And that says something to me. Now, this isn't meant to diminish any of those other things. I believe all of that that we've talked about is important. But what I think it does do is it puts prayer in a category by itself. It says to me that when we gather in his house, prayer is not perfunctory, it is not incidental, it is not optional, it is central. The house of God is to be called a house of prayer. In 2 Chronicles, we see the story of Solomon constructing the very first temple. When the Jews left Egypt for centuries, they wandered around for a long time. They wandered around the desert and they worshiped in a tabernacle, a movable tent-like structure where they worshiped together. But eventually, one day, there would be a physical temple, a central place where they would gather for worship. And when Solomon finally commissioned the construction of the first great temple of the Jews, and it was all done, 
They gathered everyone together and they, they prepared to dedicate the temple. And when they did, Solomon said these words from 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 40. Now, my God, may your eyes be opened and your ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Literally from the dedication of the first temple, it was declared to be a place of prayer. Now, here's where it gets interesting to me. That first temple that Solomon built was built in the 10th century BC. 400 years later, it was destroyed by the Babylonians when they came through and just wiped out the nation of Israel. The temple was rebuilt in 516 BC by a man named Zerubbabel. The second temple was called Zerubbabel's temple. And it stood until 70 AD when it was destroyed by the Romans in the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. The Jews had always understood the temple to be the dwelling place of God on earth. And so here's the important and essential question. Since the destruction of the temple, where does God dwell? On earth. In Ephesians chapter 2, Paul explains something very important to us. I'm going to jump for a moment to Ephesians 2, verses 19 through 22. Here the Apostle Paul writing says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners or strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God's spirit, in which God lives by his spirit. Do you understand what the Apostle Paul is saying? He is saying that now we are the dwelling place of God. The church is the people of God, whether we are gathered in a place of worship, whether we're dispersed in the world. And so the dwelling of God, the house of God, is now his church, is his people. We are the dwelling place of God by his Holy Spirit. Paul says something very similar in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 16. I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 16, rather. He says here, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? So Paul is reinforcing again, we are now the dwelling place of God. And if we are the dwelling place of God, if our hearts are God's home, and if, as Isaiah declared and as Jesus reinforced, that God's house, God's home is to be called a house of prayer, then we are now meant to be a house of prayer. As I mentioned a moment ago, the church is both the gathered and the scattered people of God. I think we probably all know the church is not a building, right? It's God's people. When we come together, when we we gather for worship, we are the church. And so this says to me that prayer needs to be a central and essential piece of our gatherings every week. And when we leave worship, we continue to be the church as individual believers dispersed out in the world. And since each of us is the dwelling place of God, our individual lives 
are meant to be centered in prayer as well. Prayer is intended to be an essential aspect of our individual lives as Christ followers. Now today, first Sunday of the new year, we are beginning a new teaching series entitled A House of Prayer. And we're going to spend a few weeks talking about this, kind of digging into it, spend some time learning about what it really means and how it is we live that out. If we are the dwelling place of God and his house is to be a house of prayer, then how does that get expressed in our lives? What does that look like for you and I? And so my goal throughout this series is that we would not only grow in our understanding of prayer, but in our practice of prayer. That we would take what we are learning each week and we would immediately begin to apply it to our own lives as the gathered people when we come together for church and as the scattered people of God as we go out into our homes and our workplaces and all of that. And so we're going to spend some significant time talking about how we become stronger in prayer, how we become deeper in prayer, how this becomes a, a significant and important part of our lives because prayer is central to who we are as the followers of Christ. This is what Jesus is telling us. This is what the prophet Isaiah was speaking when they said that the house of God shall be called a house of prayer. We're now the house of God. We are now the house of prayer. Our lives are meant to reflect that. And so this week, I want to just sort of set the table, if you will, for our conversation. Just kind of begin that that talk about what it is. And the place I really want us to begin is just reminding ourselves of why. Why prayer is so important. Why did Jesus place such an emphasis on it? And of all the things God could have called his house, why did he call it a house of prayer. I think the first reason that prayer is so important to us is because it is the way that we commune with God, come into connection with God. Prayer is our supernatural connection to God. See, I think far too often we think of of prayer as our pathway to get something that we hope for, desire, long for. And listen, don't misunderstand me. There is certainly a place in our prayer lives for petition and intercession. Petition uh, is when we ask God for things within our own lives. And intercession is when we ask God for things in the lives of others. We intercede for other people. That's important, right? That's, but too often we think of that so narrowly. We think of like that being the only reason that we pray is to, to give our, our desires, our, our wishes before God. But first and foremost, prayer is communion with God. It is connecting with God. It is our our pathway to a deeper relationship with him. I mean, think about it. If you meet someone and you feel like there's kind of a a connection there, either, either as a friend or perhaps even as a love interest, how do you build that relationship? You spend time together, right? You talk. You get to know them. I mean, if you literally never talk to someone, you won't really know them. You will never have a relationship with them. Prayer is our conversation with God. It's how we get to know him, right? It's how we grow deeper in relationship with him. And so first and foremost, prayer matters. God encourages us to be personally, be houses of prayer 
Because it's how we connect to God. It's how we build relationship with God. It's, it's how we commune with him. Prayer is also important because there is power in prayer. Literally power to change the world. Now, this has always been kind of a, an interesting aspect of our prayer life because on the one hand, God is all-powerful. And God is sovereign, right? You understand what that word means? Sovereign, it means he is the ruler over all. It means he is above all. He makes, he calls the shots. He is the creator. So God could have simply chosen to exact his will in every circumstance, like a puppeteer, right? And we could just be on the string. And so he could, he could control everything, but he chooses to partner with us in the transformation of the world. Prayer is that partnership whereby we tap into the transformational power of God for the needs and situations that the Holy Spirit has set on our hearts. And so there is this balance thing going on, right? There, there's this balance between God's sovereignty and our prayer. And to be honest, to me, it's still a little bit of a mystery to understand exactly how that works or why God chooses to work in that way. But for, for his own reasons, God has chosen to work in this world through us and with us in prayer. We read from Second Chronicles a little bit earlier. There's another section in there in chapter 7 where, where he says, if my people who are called by my name, you know how the rest of this goes? Will humble themselves and pray. Then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Do you see the emphasis he puts on us, his people praying, and then he works in that. And so there is this, there's this connection between our prayers and God's power. So whether we're talking about something in our personal lives, or we're talking about some situation around somewhere on the world, there is power in prayer to bring about transformation. By prayer, healing comes. By prayer, God provides for the worldly needs around us. By prayer, there, God brings peace where there is strife. By prayer, God brings restoration where there has been brokenness. So prayer matters because prayer is our connection to God by which our relationship with him grows. And it matters because there is power in prayer to change the world. But what we sometimes forget is that there is also power in prayer to change us. Sometimes when we pray, it's not our circumstance that changes. It's us. And that too is an expression of the power of prayer. Sometimes when you and I will pray for healing, perhaps for ourselves or in another person, sometimes we don't get the miracle we hoped for, but the miracle we get is a supernatural strength to walk a path that we could never walk in our own strength. Some of you have had to walk with someone, someone you loved and cared about through the dying process. How did you get through that? When you prayed for healing, you got strength. You got God's power. 
Sometimes when we're in a, a conflict or a struggle with another person, we might pray for that person to come to a, a place of acknowledgement or, or even repentance. We might pray that they would see the error of their ways only to find that through prayer, their heart was never softened, but ours was. Their perspective never changed, but ours did. Have you ever had that experience? Where the transformation in a, in a situation where there was struggle or conflict did not come in the way you had hoped for or thought was best or the way you thought that other person ought to change, but instead you found God changed you, transformed you from the inside out. Sometimes we will pray for things of a material nature, a better car, a bigger home, or some other aspect of provision. But rather than God giving us more stuff, he changes our hearts to be more content with, more grateful for what we already have. Our circumstance wasn't changed by prayer. We were. Tell me truthfully, have you ever had that experience? Have you ever had a situation where you prayed for something external to change, but instead God changed you? This is also the power of prayer. Today, we begin a journey towards a deeper understanding of prayer, towards a deeper and fuller life of prayer. Jesus, quoting Isaiah, said, My house shall be called a house of prayer. Now, when Jesus spoke those words, he was talking about the temple. But today, Paul reminds us that you and I are the temple of God. Collectively, when we are together as the body of Christ, the church, the, the gathering of God's people is the temple of God. And when we go out into the world and live our lives as individuals, we still being the dwelling place of God's Holy Spirit are also the temple of God. And so our lives are called to be a house of prayer when we are gathered for worship, when we are scattered out in the world. Now, every week during this series, I'm going to ask us to not only learn something about prayer, but to practice it. So before we end, I want to ask us to take a few moments in prayer together. Now, I want to invite you, I know you're home, maybe, I don't know, maybe you're watching this at work or wherever you are, whatever you're able to do, I would invite you to take a posture that is meaningful to you. You may want to sit in your chair with your hands just expressed out before you as a way of saying, Lord, I prepare to receive whatever you have for me. You may want to raise your hands in praise to God as you pray together. You may want to get down on your knees or fall flat on your face before God. Whatever posture has meaning to you, I invite you right now to get in that place, in that position, and then join me in prayer. Now, what I'm going to ask us to pray is to have a moment to just pray to, by ourselves and then I will lead us in prayer. And today, the thing I want us to focus on is that first aspect of prayer we talked about, that relationship with God. I would invite you right now to just open your heart to him and just talk to him. Just tell him about your day. 
Talk about what you're going through, where you're struggling perhaps, where you need guidance or help. And just let him know that you desire to be in that relationship with him. I'm going to give us a moment in silence to pray, and then I will pray with us. Would you join me? Lord, we've talked today about the fact that we are meant to be a house of prayer. Our very lives are to be a house of prayer because we are the temple of God. Your Holy Spirit dwells in us. And so today we come before you to acknowledge that, to just say to you, yes, Lord, Yes, we desire, we intend to be that house of prayer. And we talked a little bit about why that's so important and why you place such an emphasis on prayer when you walk the earth. And so, Lord, we are reminded that first and foremost, prayer is our communion with you. It is our opportunity to connect to you in a supernatural way. It is our relationship building with you. And so today, Lord, as we pray, we just ask that you would just be supernaturally present in our lives, that we would feel that, and that we would be able to share with you the things of our hearts, that we would express to you who we are, Lord, and and what we're going through, and just talk to you about our day, and just walk with you in a way that just builds on that connection, that relationship with you. Because Lord, ultimately through prayer, we want to be close to you. We want to be drawn into your presence. We want to experience you in the deepest way possible. And so right now, Lord, as we as we stand or sit or, or kneel before you, Lord, we just over, open up our hearts to you. We just, we just express our love to you and we just tell you, Lord, that we want this, we want this relationship, we want this connection. Help us to become deeper and richer in that, Lord. I thank you and praise you, God, for the gift of prayer. Just to think that we, humble as we are, have the opportunity to speak with and hear from the God of the universe, the one who created all that is and ever will be, is mind-blowing, Lord. It's hard for us even to imagine that we could have such a privilege. But you not only offer it to us, but you desire it for us and from us. And so today, Lord, we renew our commitment to walk with you continually in prayer, to be literal houses of prayer. I thank you and I praise you for this gift. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Well, my friends, I hope you have a blessed week and I pray that all this week you would be continually working on what we've talked about here and that you would be able to pray every day and draw closer to him. Before I dismiss this and we have our closing song, I just want to remind you that this would be a great opportunity for us to share in both our connection card and our offering. Uh, Those are available right online. Uh, You can go to rock-church.org slash connect for your connection card, and you can go to rock-church.org forward slash give for your giving or rockgiving.org. And so I would invite you to do that. And now... Uh, I'm going to invite us to just continue in our time of praise and worship as the praise team leads us out in song. Well, folks, I hope that you've had a great uh, moment of worship here with us today online. And as we prepare to go forth, I just pray God's blessing on you in the week that is ahead. Go in the Holy Spirit knowing that he dwells within you, that you are the house of God the house of prayer. And so live that out in the week ahead. Have a great week, everyone, and God bless. When I was lost and all alone, your presence was where I found hope. 
your faithfulness I've seen you breathe life within so I'll pour out my praise again you're worthy God you're worthy of all of it your promises never fail I've got stories I'll live to tell so I'll single one of those, but the most important one that we thank you for is Jesus, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for us. He made a way when we could never make a way for ourselves. We're free. We're free from the bondage, from the chains that sin had destined us for, and we get to walk in freedom, in your presence, and have a relationship with you. And we're so grateful for that, Lord. So, so grateful. And in this new year, I just pray that we would take those blessings and we would share them with the world around us. Help us do that, Father God. Teach us how to do that. Teach us how to share your gospel, your truth, your light with the world. You're good and I've witnessed it. You're strong and I've witnessed it. You're constant and I've witnessed it. And I'm confident I'll see it again and again. You love and I've witnessed it. You heal and I've witnessed it. You save and I've witnessed it. And I'm I'll see it again and again. You're good. Again. You're good and I've witnessed it. Shout it out. You're strong and I've witnessed it. You're constant and I've witnessed it. 